Hi folks, welcome back to Waterchild Tarot. This is Sarah, and as promised, I have a walkthrough for you of the Renaissance style tarot cards. This is a deck that I picked up in a Japanese auction. And I did uh, a mention of this in a recent uh, video on Japanese tarots, but I only showed a few of the cards. So I thought today we could take a look uh, more closely at this deck. Here's the booklet that comes with it. And again, it's largely uncredited. We don't know who the artist is, or at least I don't know who the artist is based on the packaging. Um, if you do know more about this deck, let me know in the comments. So that's the packaging, and that's this deck on the right. Because it says Renaissance style, I thought we could take a look at it in comparison with the Visconti Sforza tarot, um, which is here on my left. And you're seeing the backs of the cards. This edition of the Visconti Sforza is a reproduction from Los Garbeo, who have done a number of different um, reproductions over the years. This is the box that it comes in, so you know which version I have here. This was released, um, you know, sometime in the 2010s. I want to say within the last couple of years, this is like a, a fairly recent version. And like the box, um, it does have this uh, gold foil stamping, so it's very shiny. It's been completely repainted. Um, I did come by a uh, historic version of the um of this visconti deck so this is a just a facsimile of a deck that is in um of cards that are in various museums and it looks like this it's very large cards it, it would have been this size originally and it's funny because it's looking more gold on my screen than it does in person in person this gold color doesn't really show up it's just sort of a flat color but the light is making it glow a little bit on camera um, so as you can see, this uh, deck just presents the cards as they are now, essentially photocopies of them. You see all the tears, the bending, the paint loss, etc. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out on this deck, I think a lot of people don't realize, is that when you see facsimile decks that have um, gilt on them, you'll also see patches of red where the gilding has worn off. And that is sizing. Um, it's a special kind of adhesive used to apply um, gold onto surfaces. So um, especially in like the lover's card, um, this would have all been originally a gold background. Um, the angel's wings would have been gold, her dress would have been gold. So when you see the red, just substitute in your mind that this should have been gold. And you'll see that on this reproduction deck here. So this Renaissance style, uh, tarot deck, as it's called, was produced in Japan, and um, it was produced in the modern modern era, but it had some similarities in the pips that I noticed um, with this Visconti deck, and so that's why I wanted to compare these two today. However, as I was going through this deck to get the cards in order and show you, I noticed that it had a lot of, um, it's actually really a hybrid deck from a lot of different styles, and so I'll be pointing out those cards. I have several other decks in front of me and I'll be pointing out those differences and similarities as we go through here. So again, these are the backs, and um, these are essentially the title cards for these decks. Again, we don't know a lot about the Renaissance uh, Tarot, but it, it was created by this company, Dynamic Sellers, and their logo is this. It's a, a lion in a circle. Um, and then this is the Los Scarabeo edition here. Um, does this have a copyright on it? It doesn't. Um, so, but I'm sure that's in the in the uh, paperwork or something with it. So, um, we'll start out here. We're just going to kind of check out the the similarities and differences and how well this kind of fits with our other Renaissance style deck. So, right off the bat, we see that this is more of a Marseille style fool. Um, then this, it's not really similar to the Visconti. So here's a Marseille style fool. This is from, uh, I have the Gasman uh, tarot out um, from Yves Renault to compare um, because uh, that's really the closest I have to like a true um, historic Marseille type deck. So there's that one. 
And here you can see the fool has feathers in his hair. And I think that's where we get the traditional feather in the cap when we get to the RWS. Here's our magician. These are similar, but um, the limnoscate hat is, the, or the limnoscate here is drawn in, whereas it would normally be part of the hat. It would be a shape of the hat. And as you can see, the Renaissance style tarot is all in black, white, and shades of gray. And uh, Stuart Kaplan mentioned this, uh, this deck is listed in one of his tarot encyclopedias. Um, and he mentioned something about it having been possibly drawn in color and then um, photographed this way for production, but I don't think so. And, and I think we can see as we go through this um, that this was probably originally painted in black and white and shades of gray. It looks like either watercolor or gouache, uh, maybe even oil paint, but all in shades of gray, and I think that's intentional. So this should be the papess, um, but we're using esoteric titles, so we have the High Priestess. However, she does have the three-tiered crown, uh, just like our papess over here. Empress. And she has a more Tudor-style um, dress on than this Empress here. Emperor's very similar. It's interesting that the um, Visconti has the eagle in the uh, helmet or the crown of the emperor, and later on we start to see it down here um, on a shield next to him. Here's the Hierophant or the Pope, very similar. Here's that lover's card again. A similar look, and they're, they're, you can see where the Marseille kind of comes up with its imagery, but we don't have three people. Um, we just have two people and a Cupid. There's our chariot, somewhat similar. Something else I didn't point out, um, but I will now, is that the Renaissance-style tarot also incorporates the esoteric um, <clears throat> the zodiac symbols here in the majors um so you know is that we should know this sagittarius chariot um, there's also a moon phase on the cards down here so it's it's sort of a mishmash um here we have the charioteer sitting on top of a plinth uh inside this wagon and the two horses And this one is more like the RWS where you have horses with different colors. Now I ordered them this way because um, this would be the order of most historic uh, tarots with justice um, at the position of eight. However, you'll see it's numbered 11 here. So again, this uh, Renaissance style tarot, so-called, is really incorporating a lot of non-Renaissance um, style uh, symbolism and numerology. Here's our hermit. Some similarities here. We still have a staff and a light, um, but this is also an hourglass. So it's a lantern and an hourglass, whereas this one is just a lantern. And here we have the Wheel of Fortune. Now this one is fairly similar. We have the figure of Fortune, Fortuna, uh, blindfolded here. And that makes sense because, you know, we associate Wheel of Fortune with kind of the randomness of luck and good fortune and how that lands. And then here we also have that um, angel figure with the blindfold on. And this is different than in a traditional Marseille deck where you would not have that central angel figure. You would just have all the critters um, on the wheel of fortune itself. So there's no central figure in the traditional Marseille. Okay. 
And here we have Strength again. That should be 11 if we're going with the Historic deck. And um, this one has it at 8 and affiliated with the sign of Leo, of course, with the lion. Now you'll see here, this depicts, um, I think this is meant to be Hercules defeating a lion. So he's got a club and he's about to bash the lion. It's always funny um, to me that the arrangement of this card, you would think the lion should be attacking him or something. Um, and it almost looks like they're both facing off against something that's over there. But, you know, I don't know. Um, exactly why this was drawn this way, but this is how the original card appears. So here we have a more traditional, um, like Rider Waite Smith type of strength card, um, or even Marseille type strength card, where you have the Lemniscate um, drawn over the head, where it's kind of emulating this hat, and then uh, holding the lion's mouth or touching the lion. We still have a club here, so I can't quite tell, is this threatening? Is this like, be good or I'll beat you? I don't know. But in the, once we get to the Marseille and then into the RWS, we lose the club altogether and we just have the strength figure holding the lion or standing next to the lion. Hanged man. Very similar. Similar um, ways that the feet are crossed. The hands are behind the back and they're held with a single foot, not both feet. Death is different. Again, kind of a mishmash. Here we have a cape. He reminds me of Count Dracula a little bit. We've got a cape on and a scythe. Um, this death in the Visconti has a bow. And so the scythe and then the dismembered uh, hands here remind me more of a Marseille. You don't see any um, dead people or body parts in the Visconti, but you do see them in a Marseille deck. Um, there's actually a lot more here, hands and feet and faces, heads of people. And here we have Temperance, fairly similar. Um, she doesn't have angel wings in this deck but she does over here. And here's the devil. So I'm going to talk for a minute about this devil card um, because there's a bunch of different things I want to point out. So both of these kind of depict a more Marseille style devil where you have a central figure with two sort of imps or demons uh, chained. These two are actually chained to each other with the devil kind of holding the chain. Here you have the devil on a plinth um, with the two imps chained to the same plinth and this is more like the RWS. So both the Marseille and the um, RWS use this type of symbolism here with the uh, figure and standing on a plinth and then imps chained to each other or to that plinth. Um, but that's not typically what you would have necessarily seen. This is an evolution of this card from uh, older times. So if we look for a minute at um, this card, uh, which is from the Vandebor Tarot, and um, this one is a uh, Flemish Bacchus deck. You see this is just more of a monster made up of component parts. Um, and he's got all these eyes and things and his knees and he's breathing fire. He's got bat wings and all of this. So we don't have that um, suggestion of, you know, um, entrapment or slavery or that kind of thing here. Um, and this is actually more like what the, um, I think, the tarot of the time would have been. And so here we have an example from the Rosenwald deck, which would have been contemporary um, with the, or just ever so slightly later um, than this Visconti Sforza deck. And we have another version of this Visconti Sforza interpretation from an older deck. So again, we get a, a devil with bat wings. He's made up of component parts. And here he's actually eating or spitting out um, this person, here's their, sorry, their legs um, here, but they have a face in the belly. 
and they're consuming this figure here. Um, and then this guy is just kind of, he's sort of cute, you know, he's, he's got chicken feet. Um, he looks like he's wearing a sort of a hairy costume or something. Um, but there's no, there's no plinth, there's no other figures. So I like this, um, the reason I got this Visconti mini, um, which I didn't talk about yet, but this, this little mini deck is because it has these slightly more historically accurate cards that would fit with other um, depictions uh, of the time period. So here we have another version. This is, it's funny because these are both by Los Garabeo, but for whatever reason, this artist decided to go um, more in the direction of a Marseille deck than this one who recreated um, a devil card that fit with more of the time period. Uh, I believe this is like a single card from a lost deck that was found as, uh, in a book binding. So we don't have any other um, cards from this deck or, or very few. Um, but this devil kind of goes with this time period better than this one. Another um, interpretation, um, because the devil card is not actually in the Visconti deck, um, and we don't know if it really had one or not, but artists have done what they can to sort of think about what that might have looked like. So here's the version from this large deck that I have, but again, this is more Marseille with the figure up here, uh, chained to this plinth, and then these imps here. You do still get the sort of part man, part beast um, thing. And, you know, so he's got horns, he's got these exaggerated ears, he's got this hairy torso, cloven feet. Um, but this is just must, much more beast-like um, with the way that the knees bend, the chicken feet, and all of that. And, you know, again, no imps there. So I would say these, you know, these are more... Um, of the time period or, or of the sense of what the devil could have looked like uh, at this at this point. And so we have a little bit less of a chaos uh, of interpretation when it comes to the tower card, but we're in a similar position here with what would a tower card have looked like um, back in you know the 1450s to 1480s probably not like this and probably not like this both of these are fairly marseille-ish um, and then the rws you know continues to pick up on this imagery so here's our marseille card you know quite similar in a lot of ways to this tower card with the fig the two figures falling the lightning striking um, and then this sort of crown-like uh, top on the top of the tower. But this is, you know, less, less likely. Even in this large uh, format, you still have that similar look, the crown, the figures falling. Um, and then again, this is just a, a complete, um, a completely made up tower card from the mind of an artist who's trying to fill in cards that don't exist um, in our original Visconti, but I think there's an argument to be made that this tower card should actually look more like this. So just a tower being struck by lightning or crumbling. No figures, um, not really crown imagery. This is just standard crenellation, maybe with flames coming up. So, and this is the sun, um, and maybe it's the sun and lightning together, something like that, but it looks, it looks to me more like a tower that has been worn away over time than one that's getting struck and burned to the ground all at once in some big disaster. So again, there's an argument to be made. Again, this is the Rosenwald card. This is um, a restored deck by Heather Hall, but it's based um, fairly accurately on a on historic uh, deck of the time. So, you know, there's that argument to be made that this, this is more historically accurate and that this type of imagery here comes along later when we get to the age of Marseille. Here's our star card, uh, which is funny because it reminds me of Temperance as well. She's still got these two jugs of water that are being mixed rather than being poured out. Here we just have a woman who's, you know, holding a star. Here we have our moon card. 
Um, and again, like our star card, this figure is holding the moon. Um, this one is much more RWS type. Uh, and we can see that here. I suppose you could also say it's Marseille-esque. Um, but the, the face in the moon doesn't stand out to me as much in the Marseille. Um, where it really stands out boldly is if we look at the evolution of this card. So from a Marseille interpretation with the face here, then we go to RWS where the face is more pronounced, but it's still moon-like. It still hints at a crescent moon. And then we get full-blown person, you know, human, full face with hair and everything. This is the Wait JK or JK Wait or Alexandria Jupiter King deck um, from the 70s. This is also Japanese. So if we compare that back to this one, um, I think this creator was headed in this direction. You've got eye, eyelashes, lips, hair. So it's much more like this than it would have been like that one, for example. Or this one is completely different. And here we have the sun. And again, this deck on the left is the Visconti. And this is the original card from this deck. Whereas on the right, we certainly have a more Marseille type interpretation with a larger son with a face. And then we have uh, children, uh, brother and sister or twins, depending on the deck. And so, yeah, that's that influence, the modern influence there. And here we have judgment. And again, this one, you know, they're not dissimilar. We have angels, we have banners, we have a cross on the on the flag on the banner, but this one really reminds me more of the RWS with that single uh, figure rather than three here um, with the banner with the cross. So. And the world. And again, we have a very modern world card here with the central figure and the four um, animals or apostles or uh, horoscope um, entities. So as we get into the numbered cards, I'm probably going to have less to say here. We'll move through these a little faster. But um, this was actually the suit that first caught my eye with these um, batons shaped like this. Um, reminded me of the Visconti. So that's just where I wanted to compare. Um, we have foliage here, foliage here, and flowers. This is uh, grapevines. Um, and this also does remind me of Marseille because in the Swiss style decks, you get this type of wand with the little bubbles on the end. So they're more like the Italian, uh, the original Italian style than, um, you know, uh, French style Marseille or modern RWS. It's interesting that they kept the arrangement. Um, and I like that the on the black and white deck you still get some variation here sometimes you get black batons on a gray background uh, white batons on a black background all different kinds of variations here these are very similar Page, right, the queen, and the king. No 
Renaissance style tarot, we have a, a more mature looking king with a gray beard. And over here on the Italian side, we have a very baby faced looking king. Cups. Now the cup style is very different in these two. Um, this is sort of a font. It almost looks like a baptismal font, um, but the cups sort of keep this shape all the way through, whereas here we have something that looks more like a wine glass. And different arrangements. Down here you also have um, moon faces again. So we get to the court cards, the similarities sort of come back in. Swords, similar style sword here. And notice that these are realistic looking swords uh, with hilts and they're straight as opposed to the sort of scimitar like swords that you end up with in the Marseille decks. And variation in arrangements. And here we start to get a bit different, uh, more so than in the other suit, suited court cards. But I do want to point out that we still have mail here. We have plate mail. This guy's head to toe in plate mail. This guy certainly has at least bottoms on. Um, you can see his knees are jointed. And I'm, I'm assuming this is meant to be, you know, implied that it's the same here. It's just that there's fabric over top. Knight also in mail. This guy's got a helmet. This guy has just a um, fancy hat that's made of feathers. Our queens are both armored. Here you can see she's got bracers on. This would be a chest plate covered by a cloak. And then here she has those gauntlets and the mail uh, gloves. And then our king in full suit of armor also. And then our last suit of coins or here we get the esoteric title pentacles, um, but I would certainly call these coins. I do like the harvest um, type of theme here. So we had grapes in the um, the batons or the wands suit. And now we have wheat uh, here. And these are somewhat similar in design, these coins. When they have them reversed, 
Um, and these remind me, start to remind me of Chinese uh, coins, the old old style cash with the hole in the middle. Um, I think that flower is still meant to be there, so they're not meant to look like they have a hole in the middle, but it's just what visually it reminded me of. Here's our quartz, different styles of dress. And again, an older king here and a very baby-faced one here. So that's it um, for the Renaissance-style tarot in comparison. Um, this is the last card in the Lost Garabeo deck. Again, that's what the backs look like. You do get an extra card in um, the Renaissance-style tarot, and it's interesting because it's just this border shape, um, which I didn't point out before, but this shape is on every card. So um, for whatever reason, they just decided to give you that as the extra card. So that's all I have to say about these two decks. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe and I will be doing more walkthroughs of Japanese decks as well as some uh, modern, modern decks that I just got for um, gift giving season. And I will have more for you very soon. Thanks again for tuning in.